While Travis's friends all knew that it was Jody, they didn't technically have proof yet. So they had to carry on and planned a funeral for Travis with all of his friends and family. And somehow, Jody got word where it was when it was taking place. And this ballsy ass woman went to the funeral. She went to the fu- That's a special kind of fucked up. Jody. Jody, no. Someone needs to tell her no once in a while. So around this time, Jody had called the station herself asking to speak with detectives about the case. Now she calls them, right? She's like, hey, I just wanna like talk about the case. And then they're like, okay, someone will get, get in touch with you. Click. So she was a little irritated because her call wasn't being returned. So she calls again. She's like, hello, yeah, um, I have some information that you might want. Finally, she gets through and she speaks to somebody. She tells this person, the detective, that she no longer lived there in May Arizona and she moved to Northern California, but wanted to be of any assistance she could be. She told the detective the last time they spoke was on Tuesday. She ended up having a 41 minute conversation with the detective about everything and also just nothing. One thing stood out to the detective was the fact that Jody was telling him that Travis had been getting fit for his trip to Cancun. So there was just no way that someone like her could overpower him. And most likely it was two people people who took him down. This is what she told the detective. So the detective's thinking, that's kind of like a weird comment to make, but okay. So at the crime scene, there was a bloody handprint left on the wall. The blood was taken in it in hopes for like a DNA or a fingerprint match. Also, while searching around the crime scene, investigators came across a small like spot of blood on the washing machine. So they look at the washing machine like, okay, and they lift it up, lift up the lid. There was bed sheets, but most of all, there was a camera. A black camera was left in the washing machine. It had gone through the wash cycle with bleach, but the camera was taken in in hopes to like find some kind of information. The camera's memory card had been erased and the person who deleted them took five steps to delete these pictures, just proving that no accidents were made. If you have to take five steps, you know what you are doing. Do you get what I'm saying? That's what they're thinking. Anyways, on June 19th, the memory card from the camera was recovered and the first picture that came up was a naked picture of Jody at Travis's house. But get this, get this. It had a, a timestamp on the photos. Yeah, Jody, hey, babe, timestamp. Pay attention, timestamp. On the photos, it said June 4th, AKA the night of the murder. Case salt. We got it. Hold on, cause get this, cause it gets worse. So they, they keep looking through the pictures. The next set of pictures were Travis naked in bed, then possibly to kind of get him in a vulnerable position, Jody seemed to have gotten Travis in the shower and began taking more pictures of him. So a photo was taken at 5.30 PM, Travis in the shower, water coming down, and he's looking directly into the camera like, ooh. And it's believed that this is the last photo of him him alive because the following pictures were photos of what seemed to be the murder. Yeah. The camera kept snapping, catching Travis on the ground, blood coming from his head with someone's leg in the picture. You see what looked like happened, she took a picture of him in the shower and then the next couple shots are like the camera falling. Like it maybe got knocked out of her hand. It ends up on the ground and it's just taking pictures. So you can't technically see Jody like killing Travis, but the timestamps, like it's all lining up. It seemed that while Travis was in the shower, Jody began her attack. He tried to get away when she cut his neck, dragged him back into the bathroom where she shot him in the head and then put him in the shower and rinsed off his body. She then deleted the pictures, so she thought, you know, and then took all the bedding and the camera and then put them in the washer. Now it's believed that Jody just simply forgot to grab the camera and she didn't mean to wash it. Something that wasn't recovered from the camera was a sex tape that they had also made. I don't even know if it really exists or not, but like Jody had asked the investigators later on trying to like gauge how much they knew when forming her story. She's like, did you guys find the sex tape? And then when they said no, she was like, okay, they didn't find the camera. Police go out to Jody's grandparents' house where she's living. 
So when they go out there, it's July 15th and they're there to make an arrest. The police connected the dots that the gun used to shoot Travis was the same caliber of Jody's grandfather's gun that was stolen in that random burglary, remember? So while at home, they discover a rental car that Jody had packed with clothes, two knives, a nine millimeter semi-automatic handgun. She had a bunch of condoms and she was also sporting her newly dyed brown hair. Hair. No one knows where she planned on going exactly with all this stuff. I would put money on the new boyfriend's place. So they bring her in for interrogation. And when bringing her in, she's handcuffed and Jody was all smiles. And they asked if she had anything to do with it. And she kept denying, denying, denying. Eventually though, the detective busts out those photos that were retrieved from the camera. And they ask, or he asks, is this you? And Jody looks at this photo of herself and says, well, it looks like me. It's clearly a photo of her. She's butt ass naked. He's showing her this picture. She's, it looks like me. Jody said that she did indeed go to Utah. And when they checked with Ryan, the guy that she was supposed to meet, he said that she did come, but she didn't arrive until June 5th, a day later than they had originally planned. He mentioned nothing was out of the ordinary. Jody was all happy and seemed like she just, she didn't just murder someone, you know? She's just like excited to be there. Could you imagine a date comes over and you find out that they just literally murdered some, Mm -mm. So when Jody was being interrogated, she maintained her innocence saying, quote, if I killed Travis, I would beg for the death penalty. I don't know like why she felt that was helping her cause, but she said that, okay? The detective tells Jody that they found a bloody handprint on the wall. The handprint wasn't Jody's, but after testing the DNA, it came back as Travis and Jody's blood. So her blood was mixed in with Travis's blood. And then there was a handprint on the wall, which was Travis's handprint. So the detective is asking her like, you know, how, how would this happen then? And Jody's excuse was that her DNA was already there there in the room, that's why. So finally, he tells Jody, look, it's game over. You are the one in the photos and your DNA is in the bedroom. All signs po point to you. Jody's first question or response to that was to ask if she could clean up before she was booked. She wanted to put on some makeup before taking her booking photo. While waiting in the interrogation room, some of you may remember this. That's when Jody was doing handstands. She's alone. She's doing handstands in the room. She's singing songs and talking to herself. It's very unusual for someone being booked for murder. But Jody said that, you know, she was in the room for hours upon hours. She was bored. She's innocent. She didn't kill anyone. So why can't she do handstands and sing songs? She's like, you guys are being so mean to me. I don't know about you guys, but I've never been in a meeting somewhere serious and thinking to myself, God, I wish I could do a handstand right now. She's just strange, this one. Jody ends up getting booked. They don't allow her to put on makeup, thank God, because that would just be another thing that she gets, right? No makeup, takes her booking photo, sits in jail. The next day she comes back and she has a brand new story. This time Jody wanted to tell the truth. She said that she was at Travis's house when two people, this is according to her, she said two people dressed as ninjas in all black and ski masks came busting into the door at night. She said that these people were trying to assassinate Travis. 